What's up guys, we gotta talk about your ML tools today. Listen, I'm not saying that they are shit or anything, it's just maybe there is something better out there. Especially in the ever-evolving world of machine learning, things move so fast that learning about a new tool on a constant basis is crucial to your success. Today we're going to do just that and additionally also go over subtools and little helpers that will simplify your next project and improve your workflow. Here and there we will also look at some short lines of code to ensure that they also convince you aesthetically. As always, make sure to stay in the community, flow and comment your favorite tools down in the comment section, so we all can learn what you are excited about. Speaking about flow, and I know it's not a secret, but TensorFlow just has to be on every list. TensorFlow is an entire end-to-end -end open source machine learning ecosystem, where cute little animals live and feel at home, like you know, pandas and pythons. From building to training, evaluating and visualizing various steps along the way, TensorFlow has captured the hearts of ML developers around the world and is used by many of the world's biggest companies, such as Coca-Cola, Intel, Uber and Twitter. It can safely be called the industry's favorite. First released by Google in 2015, it was one of the first neural network programming frameworks that really helped catapult machine learning onto the devices of billions of people around the globe. Through this position, they also built a bit of an advantage, namely huge amounts of pre-trained models and code you can easily find online. The other main advantage is that their framework TensorFlow Lite can easily be integrated into mobile apps and IoT devices, which is key if you're not planning to run everything on servers. Since mentioning TensorFlow without Keras is a sin punishable by death, to avoid that faith, a short overview of how a simple Python model looks in TensorFlow. We are here now on Google AI platform notebooks, which is not a really cool tool you could check out. It basically gives you Jupyter on steroids and direct access to all your data on the Google Cloud. Basically, Keras, what is it? It's a simple tool on top of TensorFlow that you can use. Here's a very simple example that shows us how to train on the MIST dataset, which is, is a character recognition dataset, you know, the handwritten twos and threes and fours and so on. But basically, how do you build a model in Keras? You just call Keras.sequential, which means the layers will be one after each other. You define an input. The input here is a certain shape, which we defined here above. We basically just do a convolutional layer neural network here um, to the convolution with kernel side three and three and so on. Some max pooling in the end we flatten, throw in a dropout, and in the end we try to do our predictions with a you know nine classes output on a dense layer. To train now your model, you really just specify a loss, an optimizer, plain vanilla atom here define what metric you want to print each epoch. We say, hey, we want to train now with our training data for so many epochs and we'll get a nice overview how accuracy develops over time. PyTorch. While TensorFlow was the king for a long time, there is a new kid on the block. Actually, an old kid, pretty much the same age. I really don't know anymore where I was going with this. Anyway, PyTorch developed at Facebook has started as a bit of an underdog in 2016, but is now head to head with TensorFlow and equally as popular. By now you can do pretty much the same things in both frameworks. My personal feeling is that the natural language community is a bit closer to PyTorch and the image video based models tend to be a bit more often on TensorFlow. But in the end it's mostly a matter of what you either know better or have a suitable pre trained model or code for. Among others, PyTorch is used in Tesla's autopilot and libraries such as Pyro. PyTorch, in contrast to TensorFlow, feels to me a bit easier to develop and modify. This shows in their strong presence in research and explorative project. I find it even easier to tinker around with it using the mighty PyTorch Lightning package, which as it happens I made an entire video about. So if you want to get started with the fastest rapid prototyping library, definitely check it out. While PyTorch has mobile support, it is not as mature as TensorFlow and fairly new. You know I know a guy that knows a guy that says it sucks, but I haven't personally tested it. And to show you just how pretty it can look, PyTorch Lightning is pretty much like Keras, quite honestly. It's a module on top of, in this case, PyTorch instead of TensorFlow that really simplifies your life. For me, the main difference between Keras and PyTorch is that PyTorch, um, the PyTorch Lightning especially, is a bit more Pythonic. So if we look at the model definition here again with the MIST dataset again, 
um, you see that instead of you know defining pretty much a list and throwing um, layers into that you actually define a class and this is way nicer to me because it's more flexible and you can also change things a bit easier I personally think what you basically do is you override you inherit from this lightning module and then you override the functions that they expose to you. You can also, of course, write custom functions and then you can build on top of that. There is so much more. You can pretty much do a validation step. You can do different optimizers. You can change the optimizers, for example, while you're training, wherever you want to do that. I did that at one point, but it's pretty much the same thing in the end, but I really love it. And if you will like that or want to check out more of this, really check out my tutorial. I'll go into pretty much all the features. Initialize your model. You give it the parameters that you defined here, train data load, which tends to be really efficient. You can also customize that for your own data and maybe shuffle or download new images from the internet. And it's really flexible and easy, I personally think. Then you define a trainer and all you have to do then is then train fit. You give it your model, which inherited from lightning module and your train loader. And this then trains you a missed model. SageMaker. SageMaker is a machine learning environment that simplifies the work of any ML developer by providing tools for extra fast model building and deployment. In 2021, Amazon launched SageMaker Studio, the first integrated IDE for machine learning. It provides a web interface to monitor all possible aspects of the life cycle of an ML model. Jupyter on steroids, pretty much. Apart from being closely integrated into the AWS cloud, it also offers data labeling software and many other features. While Google and Azure have similar services, I feel this one is the most mature and definitely something I would start using soon. But as we all know, the lock-in effect of being on a single cloud just is so comfy. I will stick with Google Notebooks AI, which is also a cool thing for you Google Cloud guys. Yeah, let us know in the comments which cloud you are using most and what you love and hate about their ML services. MXNet, another open source framework designed to train and deploy deep neural networks with a strong focus on scalability. In contrast to the two main frameworks, MXNet is a child of the Apache Foundation and probably the best true open source framework. A rising star and already accessible in many languages, not just Python. It is not as popular, but still supported by all major players and can potentially speed up your computation. ONNX. I really wish they would have called it Onyx for memorability purposes. ONNX is a format to represent machine learning models. The goal here is that future developers are not anymore forced to pick a model that has been trained in their particular framework or with their tools and compilers and can experiment with new ones without too much porting work. They achieve this goal by specifying a common set of operators, basically the mathematical operations that happen between the different layers and a common file format. It is backed by pretty much all the big AI players and surely will have a huge impact on the future of ML development. Oh wait, one major player is missing. Seems to be the developer of TensorFlow. I really wonder why they are not supporting this format. <laughs> At scale learn. So far we have looked into tools with a strong standing around neural networks. The one machine learning library that I tend to use the most, however, is still SQLearn or Scikit-Learn. Being around since 2007, it has become a core part of every machine learner's tool bed. No matter if you want to work around outliers or evaluate different facets of your model, SQLearn has all of the simpler algorithms available and is structured in a familiar, easy way to use. From ensemble methods, clustering, evaluating, dataset building, and pretty much everything you ever want to do with data, SQLearn has at least some easy to use functionality that will make you more productive. AutoML tools. All in all, let's face it, we wouldn't have become automation specialists if we weren't lazy deep down. Or as Bill Gates said, the rich guy that used to be popular, I choose a lazy person to do a hard job because a lazy person will find an easy way to do it. And that is exactly why our field came up with AutoML. So in fact, learning the right algorithms and data transformation to go from your training data to predictions. While from my personal experience, these tools cannot replace really a data scientist just yet, but they will provide a lot of help and speed up the development and deployment of new tools by multiple X in the coming years. Autokeras. Let's start with the one that doesn't need a cloud infrastructure to get you anywhere. Autokeras is an AutoML system based on Keras. It is developed by Data Lab at Texas A&M University, the goal of Autocaris is to make machine learning accessible to everyone. And before I keep boring you even more, let's look at a short example. 
Okay, one more piece of interesting technology. Auto Keras is again built on top of Keras, which is built on top of TensorFlow. And instead of, as we did in Keras, specifying our model specifically here for the MIST dataset, we really just have to do one thing we call the image classifier. We don't even have to give it the number of classes, it's just a bit faster if you actually do it, it's pretty simple as well. And what it will then do, it will search different neural network architecture that may fit this specific problem, the image classifier. So really you don't do anything and it just over time learns to overfit here in this example as we see. Um, yeah, it's not that fast as you see. Why is it not that fast? Because it's not just training one neural model, right? It's training different neural networks and picking the best for you. You can really throw as much computational power at this problem as you want. You get a good initial guess if you're starting out with a new problem and you can still fine tune it then in Keras or PyTorch Lightning. Google Cloud AutoML, build your own custom machine learning models in minutes, even if you can't code that well. The last time I tried it, it performed very well on, let's say, boilerplate tasks like image classification. But the entire feature engineering and potential merging of outputs of multiple models for increased accuracy is still a bit out of the scope of this implementation. What I find extremely nice is the amount of development effort that goes into such a project. Assuming it works, it is very little compared to classical ML pipeline that you have to maintain yourself. The downside is the pricing, since it seems to cost an arm and a leg. But then again, you save that in working time. Other similar tools are IBM Watson, very well suited for companies concerned with data privacy and Azure machine learning and data robot. H2O driverless AI, another competitor with probably the best user experience. I mean GUI, I mean dashboard that literally looks like straight out of CSI Miami. Definitely the right tool for any movie director trying to shoot an evil AI developer scene. Their feature engineering is especially nice and their partners include some major players. Apart from the tech giants, also the most interesting choice from a smaller company and called a visionary by Gartner for good reasons. Amazon Lex. Amazon Lex is a service for building conversational interfaces into any application using voice and text. If you are looking to build AI powered chatbots or evaluate text, this service surely is a great starting point. I tinkered a bit around with it and must say it's indeed a nice experience and result at least when working with English data. The technologies behind the service is the same as Alexa, the home assistant by Amazon. 10,000 text requests and 5,000 speech requests are free with AWS free tires, so trying it out for some time is also a great option for new developers. And finally, you can be sure that this service scales very well no matter how much traffic you throw at it. We have learned yet again that there are more tools out there than you can ever look at. Many quite honestly fill a similar purpose and often their interactions are just as, if not more important than the specific tool. It was a pleasure checking them out together and don't forget to let us know in the comments what tools are definitely missing on this list. Please like and subscribe as well such that you will never again miss important information on your ML road to mastery. It was a pleasure, we see each other next week.